What Army Recruits Go Through a Boot Camp by Business Insider. Why are you moving? Why are you moving? Huh? 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 Ah, boot camp before they join the United States Army. So right off the bat, I think they're co-mingling boot camp, infantry training together. Because it's not 22 weeks, we know that. But, you know, let's watch it and see what they've got because this should be better than the last one I did. <laughs> see below in the description my last army boot camp uh, video. As OSIT. It happens here at Fort Benning. More than 18,000 soldiers graduate before joining the more than. Hey, so for those of you who haven't been to Fort Benning, you drive in like these big bases and it is, um, you know, four lanes going in and out. It's a huge place. I haven't been there in a while, but just massive base. Even coming from Camp Lejeune, when I went to Fort Benning, just surprised how big the base was. Just never ending. You should go and put in the comments below those of you that have been to Fort Benning for training and when. Recruits train together in gender integrated platoons. These young men and women that volunteer to serve, they show up. Hey, question for you guys, since I did never, never did not train in a gender integrated platoon, whatever that means. Um, how many of you guys trained? Put in the comments below with men and women in your platoon especially in combat arms MOS's. This is pretty new. And what was your experience? Attention, and you stand position on attention. On a rain-soaked week in February, we spent which trained soldiers to serve in the infantry and armor branches. We saw different... You figure tactics between now and even 2000, so 20 years ago, have changed radically just at the boot camp training because of all the conflict and wars we've been in. So you see them doing right off the bat in this preview, more CQB kind of stuff, close quarters stuff versus when I was in, it was all considered, you know, woods type of stuff, woodland fighting, did some desert training, but not like now where they really pushed far to the left on the desert training and they haven't gone back to jungle warfare and that type of thing. So. Interesting how these trends shift. New infantry recruits on a bus from the Atlanta airport arrive at the 30th AG Battalion headquarters. Drill sergeant, no drill sergeant, you understand? Yes, drill sergeant! So that looks pretty familiar to Marine Corps boot camp where you know you get your drill instructor pop on the, the bus, screaming, yelling at you. It's not quite as nasty and loud as I remember, but you know how that goes. You know, letting everybody know the basics, keep your mouth shut. When you speak to one of us, here's how you'll speak to us. And let's keep going. Oh, 30 seconds. Hurry up. The first order of business is establishing the code of conduct. Because I promise you, if you don't pay attention. You know, these code of conducts, code of conducts is a moving target. You know, what we did, you did five years ago, 10 years ago, is going to be changed in 2020. A hey, question for you, put the comments below. What did you see change during this code of conduct, they call it, <clears throat> while you were in? So what changed uh, when you were in the Army or whatever branch as far as code of conduct goes? Uh, put that below. I'd love to hear that one. That should be interesting. Regardless of race, religion, color, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, <laughs> and all other protected categories. Yes. Yes. Listen, you better consult your attorney to determine what protected categories are um, and the date you go to boot camp because he just spouted off, I don't even know how many things. Don't touch the guy next to you or lady next to you and keep your mouth shut. Don't say anything rude. That should summarize it. But now you got to worry about protected categories, which is tr tricky. I don't know if somebody's ex fill in the protected category blank um, unless they tell me, really. Assault is any unwanted physical contact in a sexual nature. So if you put your hands on another individual and you're not instructed to and you're not saving their life and they file a sexual assault and it comes down that you put your hands on this individual. Now think about that. You're a drill instructor. You love the Army or drill sergeant. You want to train young recruits and now you've got to be the HR department for the Army. You go through this whole discussion. You know, back in the day they take them behind the XYZ woodshed and get after them if they did dumb stuff, right? It's a shame. It's tough. I can't imagine being a this drill sergeant dealing with this kind of PC nonsense or just common sense people don't have. Everyone look down at their toes. You should be able to fit a slice of pizza in between your toes. <laughs> if you look around, they're going to see you. All the same. 
the recruits grab the snack that's waiting for them inside, consisting of a fruit cup, sunflower seeds, a granola bar, and a juice box. What is that for, like, eight-year-old soccer camp? Nothing against the army, but that's the most, the dumbest little snack box, or whatever the heck they call them. You know, juice box, sunflower seeds. Hey, we're going to spit those in some kind of gummy bears. I mean, come on now. They're treating them like children. I hope that's not the way they actually are, but that's uh, that's something right there. <laughs> 75, the hour you spend, where you are embarking upon will not be easy. Hey, question for you guys. How many guys showed up to boot camp like those three we saw? Guy with a big fat goatee, guy with a kind of beard thing. I don't, I don't remember anybody when I went to Marine Corps boot camp that showed up with facial hair, no less a scraggly little beard. Maybe some long haired guys that cut it off, but the beard thing, that's interesting. Put that in the comments. Are you social? After being welcomed, recruits begin what's known as processing, which can take one to two weeks before their actual training begins. In a little bit, we'll give you a period to go in a room by yourself. First, they're given one last chance to discreetly dispose of prohibited contraband. You know, they're making the military, and I understand why, but they're making it nerfing your world. They tell you what not to bring when you're going to boot camp. See, so, so you bring dip. You're on the bus. Well, you leave the dip on the bus. Now they got to have this, you know, safe room, or the heck they call it, to dump off the stuff they told you not to bring that you're too dumb to dump on the bus or dump at the airport. You know, they should just hold these guys to a stand. You show up with this stuff, I'm not saying kick them out. But there's got to be some recourse. It's this never-ending, you know, nerfing the world of these young people. I don't know. It just seems a little soft. In an amnesty room, where they dispose of it by throwing it down a metal chute. Where one barber has worked at Fort Benning for almost 60 <laughs> years. I've been here ever since 1960. So imagine that. They call this a barber shop at the recruit depot, right? There's no cuts. There's one cut. Here's the barber shop. Easy deal. One cut. We shave your head. <laughs> this guy's been there since 1963. Can you guys imagine the amount of people he's seen run through that place? My lord. Fill up their one to two week stay in processing. Hey, sit up straight. That is. You know, so that processing phase in DOC, as we call it in the Marine Corps, it's about the same. I mean, it's about a week or less, I don't recall. But in in DOC, you know, so the Marine Corps in dock compared to that, they're still getting after you. Now, it's not like when you get picked up about, I think it's called the shark tank or whatever. You know, that's the same where you've got that freak fest with your, when you meet your real DIs. But the in dock, it was pretty, it was pretty hardcore, you thought, until you got Black Friday, as now they call it in the Marine Corps, where you meet your real drill instructors. And that's what's coming up here. Stay tuned. Let's go. Grab your bags and go. We you guys are going to the front. This is the last chance for recruits to change their minds before training begins. Like one recruit who decided to stay behind. Yeah, I don't get that. Uh, last chance to stay behind or change their minds. If they can just change their minds and say, hey, I don't want to be in an infantry MOS and I want to be a supply sergeant or whatever, supply logistics guy, right? That's a different boot camp. All right, fine. I don't know what changing their minds, they get the time to think about it, you know. Uh, I don't know that's the best thing. What do you guys think? Let me know below in the comment. That's the shark attack. <laughs> shark attack, I like that one. <laughs> so this is a shocker. Um, very similar to what I went through in Marine Corps boot camp. You're not used to getting screamed at, especially when three or four of them jump on top of you and they're screaming, freaking out, and picking on you. So if you're a big, tall guy, they're gonna pick on you. If you're a tough guy, you look tough, say like this guy here, they're gonna pick on you. And they're gonna see if you flinch. If you're used to not putting up with this kind of stuff, right? You're used to smacking someone around. If they do this, they're gonna do it to you. And you're not gonna do anything. You just stand there and get this spittle in your face. Now how We're breaking a lot of habits? How in the world did that guy get in? That guy was way overweight to be in the military by any standard. 
I mean, his BMI had to be 35. Now, what do I mean by that? If you're overweight and you go in, there's a reason they don't want you coming in to you the right way. It's going to be tough to do PT. Most people that are heavy like that aren't capable of doing the PT necessary. You may have the rare freaks that are outstanding at it. That's a rare thing, so I don't know how they let that guy in. Established that that drill sergeant is in charge to let... The recruits spend much of the shark attack holding their heavy rucksacks above their heads, which takes a physical toll. You decided to join the army and you can't pick that back. And the drill sergeant's tone changes. We only produce the best... I don't know what the Army's like in this regard, but in the Marine Corps, there were certain PT base, base standards you had to have, right? And the pulley process, recruiters were pretty good. My recruiters were good at making sure you could run, push up, sit ups, you do mini PFTs. You go there somewhat prepared physically. At least you know you got the, not the basic standard, you know, the base standard, but middle of the road or the highest standard. So you're not getting crushed when you're holding your sea bag above your head and you can't do it, you know? Let me know below, you Army guys, what that was like today. Is there a you know baseline standard of PT you should be able to do, or they tell you to do, before you go to, in this case, Fort Benning? After the shock and awe of the shark attack, things do appear to calm down. You know, that's a definite difference, right, um, compared to the Marine Corps. There is no calming down in boot camp. And then the next phase, when you go to infantry training, however you get there, MCT or you're a, in a combat arms MOS, even then they treat you like the boot you are. It's not the same yelling and screaming, but you get treated pretty much like a dirt bag. So, I don't know. These guys are smoking a joke. It's probably for the camera, but uh, let me know below in the comments what your experience is there. Is it really that much of a easy, laid-back atmosphere after the shark tank? Soldiers in Boy, week 11 of their training. Big fella. In the firing range. <laughs> military expression ate up. Is a piece of ate up gum good? You don't want some? You know, you get guys from all over where you say ate up and you guys know what it means. I know what it means. I don't need someone to explain it to me. But apparently some don't, right? So it's pretty funny when you get into some, there's some military expressions that, funny expressions, right? But ate up, it seems like a common one. It's pretty funny. He's sitting there explaining it to some of these jokers who don't know. The soldiers become more critical thinkers. At that point, we are turning into more coaches and mentors back a little bit. <laughs> all right I, I can't resist they don't want you to be a critical thinker now you're not aristotle what they're looking for is you'd actually think not ask dumb questions listen to what they're saying and do what they're saying those are the things you don't need to be a critical thinker this isn't any kind of uh astrophysics we're talking about up to 241 hours of infantry OSIT are devoted to marksmanship as well as the M249 Squad Automatic Weapon, or SAW. You know, so this course looks pretty good. I'm sure they're running between stages, shooting at either fixed targets or unknown distance targets. Probably gets into different stages, but you know, this is a good stuff right here. You know, the SAW for you guys that haven't shot one is fun. It's not as heavy as the M60 to carry, especially with the ammo size. And you know, this is the kind of stuff you think about going in the military. They're not doing it per se for qualifications but just get comfortable right now and going through these kind of really realistic setups where you're behind cover and putting down some uh cover fire in this case with a 60. expert marksman at their individual weapons recruits get one of the most painful parts of training out of the way early exposed to cs gas or tear gas you know business insider does a good job with these documentaries hey, and check in the description below i did one on the marine corps that's why i wanted to do this one about the army so the gas chamber, right? Everybody hears about it. It sucks no matter how you slice it. It was got some pretty good gas masks. The ones that I had leaked. They always leaked. They never worked. So basically, from the time you walked in, it was leaking. Dawn and clearing didn't really do anything. Kind of a joke. If you freak out when you get underwater, you need, you're holding your breath. It's kind of like that here because you can't, really can't breathe well. When you breathe well, you get more of the stuff in, so you're trying not to breathe. You know, it's one of those things they'll tell you to do. You just go in. If you're a freak show about little things, this is going to make you a bigger freak show. So that's all I can say about the gas chamber. Uh -huh. The recruits spend about like Darth five Vader. minutes inside the gas hut. Exiting the gas hut, the recruits are told to flap <laughs> their arms like birds. Begin to wear off after about four minutes. Here's a good thing you do. So you go to the gas chamber, at least in the Marine Corps, we had to go, I had to go once a year. Sometimes more. But you go to the gas chamber, right? 
when you come back, these crystals will be on your utilities. You make sure you take your, your utilities, right? And your squad bear, wherever you go to your roomies pillow, you shake it off. So all the crystals get on the pillow. And then that night when they're laying there and start hacking, they'll start screaming your name. That's a good one. Pro tip there, keep that one in mind. Some training moves indoors, like combatives. Negative position and then switch roles so they end up having the upper hand in a fight. During combatives training, recruits warm up with a particular- That looks like it's a pretty good training. We didn't have that. We had the Marine Corps version of like a martial arts thing, but I'm sure it's changed with the, uh, the UFC. Some good training there. How many times, I mean, you need to know how to take a combative down, right? So take somebody down and secure them, zip tie them. I'm not sure you need to know how to fight much on the ground. Honestly, if you get there, you're probably totally screwed. Um, but this is some good training from the looks of it here. They use the momentum, shoulder blades, their, their core, to help them create space, warm up the body. That's a pretty weird exercise. Looks like it's probably pain and hard to do, actually. Uh, any of you guys have to do that? When you're at boot camp, this little swirmy thing on the ground in your back, let me know what you thought of it. Is it hard? That's a question for you. Is that exercise hard? It sure looks hard. Which stands for meal ready to eat. Each comes with an entree, like this vegetarian pasta with taco sauce, yes. along with... Hey, what are you guys' favorite MRE you know, meals or snacks or whatever they give you? You know, mine was always... The crackers and peanut butter and jelly that was always one you could trade a lot of things for but there were some things in the mres that you could swap that one thing that people wanted for three or four other things so that was a big thing in the the marine corps especially on deployment swapping around stuff in the mre because you didn't know back in the day until you opened it up what you were getting you open the package and you go oh you know dehydrated pork again not that you know so tell me what you guys favorite ones were known as mount which stands for military operations in urban terrain. Now, Business Insider here, this doesn't look like a boot camp scenario. If it is, hey, put it below in the comments. Um, look like there were specialists there. Maybe he's a trainer. I don't know, but looks like some good training. A lot of guys sweeping each other, um, especially when you're the guy below, you know, one guy below, one guy above. When you're that guy below and he starts cracking off rounds, Try that even with blanks. It's going to be an experienced concussion, especially if someone's got a 240 above you or a you know, pig, you know, 60. That'll wake you up. And win the fight. Right now, they are getting their first taste of uh, what that's like in an urban environment. It's important for the future soldier's muscle memory because they are working as a team with minimal... That kind of exercise is important. It's like for those of you guys that played sports, right? You run a play, you run the play. And you run enough times, you know exactly where you need to be. That's the same thing here as for going left, you're a group in a squad or fire team. You're going right, you're going through a building. You get into a habit, just know where you should be. You're the first guy in or the last guy in, what you should be doing. So he's right, it does build up muscle memory. You know, and I think that's the important thing of doing it over and over and over. Because just like in practice, you're good at in practice until you're in a game, right? And then you're not as good typically. You're good at it here at Fort Benning in their kill house until you start getting shot at. You're probably not as good. So that's why these guys are doing a great job really enforcing that. He's good, good at explaining it because that's why it's important. Friends and family gather to watch their soldiers graduate on NOA Field. They're carrying their head high. Hey, how many of you guys have graduated? Like I said, NOA Field? Put that in the comments below. And uh, I don't know if it's rainy all the time. They said it was February time frame. This whole time they were there, it looked like they were getting soaked. It must have been tough on their feet. These new infantrymen don't have long to greet their loved ones. Get on the bus! Yeah, usually after, let's say, in my case, infantry training or even after boot camp, you get some leave. Depending on your situation, after boot camp, yes. Let me think. I think after infantry training, I could have gone home, maybe had some leave, depending on your unit. So if you're assigned your unit, it's already deployed. You know, let's say it's already in Germany in the Army's case, or maybe go on deployment. Maybe you just got to get there. Hey, put that below. Or say goodbye to their friends. Hey, if you guys like what you're watching, put some comments below and let me know what part of this video or what videos you guys would like to see. Hey, thanks for watching.